Hello YouTube, this is Dex Nolan here with a brand new deck profile. Today I'll be bringing you Farfist, a really fun deck and a really strong deck this format. It's combo based, it's fast and it's pretty consistent, although it does have some brick hands. I played this at locals today and I went X1-1, so that's out of 5 rounds, I had 1 draw and 1 loss. Um, as I said, it does sometimes brick. It has a lot of monsters that special summon another from the grave, such as Wolf Bark or Farfish Spirit, and even Rooster is a bit of a brick. Uh, this can be a problem, but thank God we have Tenki and Tensu, which kind of play out around that. And once the deck gets going, it doesn't let go. Uh, so yeah, let's get straight into the main deck. I run, I think, 13 monsters. Uh, it's 3.5 axis, except there's no 5s, because I don't know why it's called 3.5 axis when there's no 5s, but whatever. Uh, so I run 2 Bear and 1 Gorilla. Um, it's just toolboxing. Bear is probably better, but Gorilla does give you the option to destroy Speller Traps, and that's pretty good. It also allows you to get a uh, destroy face down monster or a set monster or whatever, like a shadow monster, and get the search too, which is pretty great. Um, two Wolf Bark to get them back. Three is way too cloggy, and two does the job. It's searchable with Tanky, and Tanky is searchable by nearly every other card in the deck, so just two Wolf Bark is necessary. Uh, three rooster, or two rooster, sorry. Uh, three is way too cloggy, and two does the job. Usually it's special summon from the deck. And really, after you've done the horse prince combo twice, you'll never make it a third time. Like, that's why I only want to run two horse prints anyways. So, two rooster is more than enough. Um, three spare and three leopard. Uh, these are part of the combo, and pretty much, they're insane. Once this combo gets off the ground, it doesn't stop, and your opponent can pretty much scoop up their cards. Um, just so good, so consistent, and um, Spirit's just a beast. Um, then for the far formations, you run two Gaioku, uh, kind of like an MST pseudo-wise. Uh, it's searchable though, and um, it kind of it's really good against BA, because you can lock down the far lake, and they can't special summon from hand, which is just too good. Too, too good. Uh, two, three, three Tensu. Uh, Tensu is really good in this deck, it kind of sets up all the combos, Allows for your like first play to go through whether they like bottomless a bear or something, then you can just set special like nor extra normal summon whatever else. Maybe it's a wolf barrack or maybe it's a spirit or something to get your plays going. Uh, triple ten tanky. Sorry, it just searches everything in the deck. So good, and one rekindling just like for those comeback plays. It's insane. Um, rekindling for five does sometimes happen, and when it does happen, you know it's just so good. Um, I run the one Regeki and Double Dark Hole. I think you should run these in any deck that isn't able to keep up with stuff like Necros or Clue Forts or whatnot. Um, it's just it's a board clear and allows you to poke for so much damage. And with Bear, it's they're just unbelievable. Um, one Book of Moon, just so versatile and double MST. Uh, a lot of players don't run the MSTs, but um, I'm running two MST and a Bottomless Trap Hole in place of Triple Upstart Goblin because mine are still in the mail. Um, triple Fiendish Chain. Fiendish Chain is an incredible card and definitely a three of it's so good against the Tall Knights and even against stuff like Star Star Shadows and um, and even Burning Abyss if you can stop the um, the Torgard play it's pretty good. One Compulse. Uh, I'm not really good, like happy with the the Compulses and Ring of Destruction and, and Bottomless and Torrential, that kind of stuff, which used to be good in past formats, but those staple traps have kind of like really waned in usefulness. Uh, at this point, I love stuff like Vandy's Emptiness more so. Uh, so we got the one Ring, we've got the one Torrential, with the one Bottomless, we got Triple Mind Crush. Triple Mind Crush is really the best card in the deck, or in any deck for that matter, just so good. Against Kaleidoscope called Unicorn, it just stops them right in their tracks. If they go for a mirror, well, you know, they've searched a Trish, call the Trish, and the Trish play will be gone. You know, it's just so good, even against Sol Knights hitting Altairs out of hand, it's, 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 un it's, un it's insane, sorry. Um, one Solemn Morning and then one Vandy's Emptiness for the main deck. Um, Solemn Morning is a great card always, and so is Vandy's Emptiness. Uh, I can't say that I'm unhappy with either of those. After the extra deck, I'm just proxying one card, which is the second horse print, which is Laval Val Chain. So obviously no money issues or anything. Um, so yeah, uh, Vulcan, one Vulcan is enough, because he's just like for the last spirit play, uh, just to make Vulcan shut off, get a thank you back and go turn into the four axis dot deck. I think it's like a brilliant card, and then just two horse prints, because um, it's your playmaker, like it's, it's the card you always go into. Uh, so yeah, it, you never run anything but two horse prints and Vulcan, it's all you need, you never run three horse prints, no Vulcan, you never run two Vulcan, 
two hour sprints, two, whatever. That's the perfect ratio because you resolve spirit three times, and uh, it's first two times it's horse sprints, the last time it's Vulcan. Um, and for the rank threes, I just run the three of them: the defensive, the aggressive, and the line emperor. The line emperor is kind of like just a utility card. It allows you to do the spirit the fourth time, contrary to what I just said, but I never make this to make spirit the fourth time. What I usually do this is get a, um, I think it's a wolf bark back. It's just, yeah, just target one fire monster, so I use it for wolf bark. Um, and engineer, you could play fortune tune instead. I prefer engineer. It's it's a bit higher attack and it can be used aggressively. Like in, if you know your opponent's mirror force, you just use this to bait out the mirror force. Um, and Nightmare Shark, because this deck pushes a lot of damage on it, it can make a really strong Heartland Draco, so to finish off the game, a Spirit Pine to this is just too good. Um, one Tiger King, um, one Cardinal, and one Heartland Draco. These are kind of um, what I'd call uh, specific to the deck, sorry about that drop. Um, like, you can make Heartland Draco on any deck, but I think it's extra good here because of the face-up spells, just makes it attack directly, constantly. Uh, as well as being un untargetable by attack, so it makes it a pain for your opponent to get around. Cardinal is, is kind of like situational, but um, because you never usually have the two farfest monsters make it. But when you do have those monsters, like you never want to go into anything else. It gets tangies back in the deck, which just makes your late game so much better. Also, this card is uh, is great. It's it's just free advantage and it, it helps win so many games because of its uh... It, like it's, it plays aggressively like it stops stuff like exit all night and th then it's, it gets the search too so that means um... you know you have a wolf back for his second play uh... i won one exit on one honor arc uh... one dweller one castell one cowboy and one rhapsody and berserk i chose rhapsody and berserk as my last uh, rank four because i uh... I thought Ragnar Zero was cool. I also kind of considered other stuff like Laval Battle Chain and Gaga Samurai, which are pretty good at the moment. Diamond Arwolf is an awesome card, but I figured this was just so good in like against the volcanic matchup, like just getting rid of the scatter shots, because this is the one thing that X struggles with, is getting over big attack monsters and also um it doesn't float, so it just generates as much advantage and puts it on the board is very aggressive what that way, cause tensu and stuff. Um uh, so that means that it's kind of like six hand once once your board is broken uh you don't really have much comeback potential um actually kind of you do because you've sort of like a wolf back that you search out at the end of the place but what i'm trying to say is um like you, after a couple of board wipes like if they board wipe you going for spare into into leopard and then they they like scatter shots you then then you know like your play is kind of ruined, you can't synchro summon, uh, you may have an extra normal summon, but it won't be a spirit play, so it's kind of like, doesn't set you up next turn, you have to play a lot more conservatively, and that's what I mean. Rhapsody gets rid of that fair, it allows you to play super aggressively against decks like Volcanics, also good against Banishing Necros Mirrors, so you kind of, um, you know they've less that they can do. So yeah, this is, uh, sorry about that rant. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below if you like the video. Uh, then like it. Um, if you want to see more content from me, subscribe. I upload as often as I can when I have something to upload. So I'm not going to upload all the time, but when I have a new deck, when I have something cool to show anyone, I'll make sure to upload it as soon as I uh, possibly can. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. This is Dexnone, and peace out.